welcome everyone to another Raw Therapy tutorial. Before we start, I would just like to say in my last tutorial about the cropping tool, there was uh, some discrepancy about how to apply the crop, and I'll be going over how to apply the crop in this video. Um, so if you want to, I'll put the time code somewhere on the video. You can just jump to that spot and look at how to uh, what that means. But if you want to watch through the video and look at what we're looking at today, then you're free to do that too. So, as you can see, I am here in Raw Therapy, and I'm just going to scroll down here. A friend of mine and I went out for a photo shoot the other day just to get some photos. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to select this photo here. So I double click on it. Uh, today, we're not going over one tool in particular. I'm going to take you through my new editing process. And I'm just going to go ahead and close the photo strip and then come over here to the transform tabs and make sure that I've got my uh, lens correction. As you can see here, I've also got my histogram up and running. And what I want to note here on the histogram is I have some really overexposure on this side, but some underexposure over here. So the first thing that I'm actually going to do is I'm going to take the exposure down. Let's see if I can take it down. Oh, whoops, I am. I'm turning the photo. There you go. Take the exposure down. Um, and now there's, there's no color here. So what you want is you want the edge of your, your curves on the histogram to be touching either side. This side will be the blacks of the photo and this side will be uh, the whites or the, the highlights. So I'm going to increase my exposure compensation until those edges just touch the edge. And then I'm also going to increase the black. Oh, too much. There you go. Something along those lines. All right. Uh, next, as you can see, this is still really dark. So I'm going to go ahead and increase the lightness. Something along those lines. And I'll add about a 20 for saturation. Now I'm going to come down here. Um, the tone curves, there's two tone curves. What you're supposed to do is you're supposed to kind of darken the photo with the first curve. And then you're supposed to lighten what you darken with the second curve. And this gives you a better control over the lightness and darkness in your photos. For now, we're just going to use a single curve. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to lighten this up and uh, if I if I pull up from the bottom on the left hand side of this box here it's going to lighten up what's below if I pull down from the top it's actually it's actually going to darken what's above so um, and then of course if there's let's say a straight line in my curve you actually lose basically all contrast in the image although I kind of like what that did to this guy but uh, so I'm going to go ahead and pull up a little bit and then pull down here. That's a little too much. And then finally, I'm going to turn on the shadows and highlights and increase the shadows. And decrease the highlights just a hair. Okay. So there's that. Uh, now we'll go over here to the sharpening. There's a lot of things that you can change here in the sharpening, but all I'm really worried about is the amount. And I'm just going to bump that up to something like uh, 500. Then I'll close that. And then you remember the local contrast from our last video. And I'm just going to turn that on. Gener I, I uh, rarely need more than that. I'm going to zoom in here to one to one and see how my picture is doing. You can see that my shirt here is quite uh, noisy. So I'm going to turn on noise reduction and then I'll come over here to the luminance and I'll bump that up to about 30. Oh, that's 3. 30. And as you can see, that kind of takes care of the noise without uh, destroying the detail too much. Okay, now I'm going to zoom back out and come over here to the color tab and I'm going to turn on the vibrance and click uh, protect skin tones and I'm going to increase that to 20. 
now, here's where we can really do some amazing stuff. This is the HSV equalizer. And H stands for hue, which is kind of what color is what color. You can take different colors, like let's say I wanted to make this guy green. This is where I would do that. I would make all blues in the photograph green. Uh, saturation, uh, and I can show you how to do that here really quick. Uh, saturation is how much of a color, and then value is how bright or dark that color is. So I'm going to start off here with the saturation. Well, first, let me just show you how to use the hue real quick. And this is a little, okay, there we go. So um, you can see all of these different points. I'm going to get rid of all of them but two. All right, now the right and left determines what color is going to be changed, and then the up and the down determines um, what that color will be changed to. So I'm actually going to move this over to the yellow. Then I'm going to right click, and where it says O, I'm going to change that to uh, 0.5 just to keep that right in the middle. And then you, to hit, click this little pencil icon to get out of that mode. And then I'm going to move this one over to blue. Let's see here. Something like that. Right click. And, then, and now, um, let's see, watch the blue of the sky as I increase this. Let's increase this to 0.8. And you can see that all of those blues have now been changed to yellow. I can, if I can move that over, let's say to point, uh, 0.5. Now if I move that down to point 0.8, uh, I'm sorry, point 0.2, you can see that those blues in the sky have now been turned to um, more of a, maybe an orange or a pink. <clears throat> anyway, uh, that's what your hue does. So I'm going to leave that where it is, and I'm going to come over here to the saturation. And again, um, if I want to play with really specific colors, then I would really dial in these colors specifically. You can see down here what color the line is going to be at. But I actually am just going to get rid of all of these just by grabbing and dragging off the screen there. And then I want to saturate my yellows and oranges. And you can see as I increase this, the saturation really changes. You can turn that off and on. And then I'm going to move this over to more of a blue and also increase that. So yeah, I'm going to increase this a lot just to kind of dial that in. Somewhere like there. Um, and then I'm going to right click this and bring it down to a 0.75. Something like that. Now, one thing that's really great is you could decrease colors too. Let's say I wanted to decrease the greens. I would just click and drag to add in a new, um, a new dot there, and then I can desaturate and pull that all the way down. And if I move these closer, like this. Now I've actually desaturated what's down here. Uh, but I don't want to do that for this particular photo. Now let's come over here to the value and open that up. Wait for it. Okay, uh, so I'm actually going to darken the reds here. Oh, one little trick too is you can see that as I grab the dot, it's really hard to keep this straight up and down. So um, I'm actually going to reset here. If you grab above the dot, It'll, I, well, that goes right or left. Um, sorry. If you grab above the dot, there you go. Now that it's locked to up and down. So, and you can see that uh, as I increase this, my face um, gets brighter. And as I decrease it, it gets darker. So I'm going to decrease the reds a little bit. I'm going to increase the brightness of the yellows quite a bit. Uh, I'm going to decrease the greens and decrease the blues.
um, and also decrease the purples. So actually, I'm just going to get rid of this one. There we go. And then last but not least, you can see when I put my mouse over the dot, uh, there's these kind of parabola um, or curve manipulators. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and grab this curve manipulator. You can just put your mouse over it when you see the right and left arrows, and then click and drag. And I can I could drag it way over there, but I'm just going to kind of make these curves a little bit nicer to look at. Because what that what the curve means is from this specific shade of yellow, going like this. It's it, this is the peak of the saturation, and then as it gets less yellow into green, it's desaturating, desaturating, desaturating until it gets to this specific shade of green, or I guess that's a turquoise. And then it's desaturated at that point all the way until it gets over here to red, and then up to yellow again. Um, now for this one, I'm gonna kind of just mess with the curves here. I'm just gonna get rid of this. And let's see, this one, uh, I'm going to make that a 0.25, and then this one also a 0.25. And I'm actually right-clicking on those uh, to bring up these parameters right here. The I uh, is your horizontal, the O is your vertical, and then the LT and RT. LT um, stands for the left, and RT stands for the right for the uh, curve parameters. So like if you can see if I click on this one, my LT is at a 0.45 and my RT is at a 0.42. But if I click on this one, my LT is at a 0 0.0, uh, I'm sorry, 0.35, and so is my RT. 0.35 is the default. Okay, so I'm going to zoom back into one-to-one -one just to make sure, let's see if I get my pants, if the noise is still a little bad. So let's increase this maybe to 40 and then bring in some detail recovery let's bring in 15 like that. all right and I'll zoom back out okay uh, for those of you who want um, to know about the cropping tool so we already went over this before in the previous tutorial um, about the crop. So let's go ahead. I'm going to make this a 4x5 crop for Instagram. And then I'm actually just going to change the rotation just a smidge. Okay. Now here is the beauty about the cropping tool. It's done. Uh, it's already applied. If your cropping tool is on and you have changed the crop in any way, then your image is already cropped. Raw therapy um, for better or for worse, doesn't actually crop the image while you're editing it. So uh, if you want to see what your image looks like cropped, you can come up here to the background color, where right here it's um, right here in the what is this, the editor window. You can change this to black, and that will uh, actually make everything black and, and non-transparent. You can change it to gray, or you can change it to white to see what your image looks like. Um, but you can see if I go ahead and add this to the queue, that it's my same image. You can actually see where I've cropped it. Um, but if I export it, it will actually export only the cropped image. Uh, and this is actually because this is a raw image and raw therapy is a raw editing program, meaning Raw Therapy is a raw editing program, and when raw files are edited, the actual file is not edited. It's just a parameter that is made for the file that Raw Therapy knows how to read. So uh, you may have noticed your raw files have these uh, .pp3, I believe they're called, files that show up next to your raw image. And that is all of these settings. And the beauty of this is you, if you have that pp3 file, uh, raw therapy will read what your file is and, and it will apply all the settings automatically. However, uh, it doesn't actually edit the image, meaning that you can always go back to the base image and re-edit it without any loss of 
of information or uh, you know downscaling or anything like that. Uh, so when you have that crop tool turned on, then you are good to go. And you can just go ahead and export your image and you'll see that your, your exported image will be your cropped image. So everyone, thank you so much for watching this tutorial. Uh, let me know if you have any comments or questions. Let me know if you like this new setup with the camera. Uh, I really appreciate all the feedback and all the questions that I get. Please like, comment, subscribe if you so choose, and I will see you next time.